In this video, you're going to learn the different terms associated with orchid care and everything that is related about anatomy and terminology. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say the term and then associate that term with how you use it in orchid care so you can get the best value out of this video possible. At the end of this video, I am going to direct you to a place where you can download the, all the terminology into a nice little PDF form and you can have all these terms at your care. It's totally free, so stick around to the end of the video. Hi, I'm Amanda Matthews, and thank you for watching this video at Orchidaria. So in this video, we're going to go to the different orchid terminology and the anatomy of each part of the orchid so that you can accompany better the videos and the tutorials and the articles that come out in orchid care. So let's dive in. The first thing we need to know about orchid care is if it's a monopodial orchid or a sympodial orchid. Now, this is a... Oops. This is a monopodial orchid, a Phalaenopsis orchid. A monopodial orchid means it has one mono stem. It grows out of one direction and it's vertical. So all your monopodial orchids will be a vertical stem that grows up. You know, the, the spike grows up, the leaves grow up. It's not a orchid that will get bushy. It's an orchid that will grow higher in instead of wider. The difference between a monopodial and a sympodial, for example, a cattleya. A cattleya doesn't have only one stem. It has a rhizome and from that rhizome it will be producing several, let me get this out, it will have several different pseudobulbs that grow up from that. As you can see, there's like little soldiers, soldiers in a line that just stands, you know, one right after the other, and they grow out horizontally. So that is the, one of the basic differences between a monopodial and a sympodial. For monopodial orchids, you will have vandas, you will have the phalaenopsis orchids, you will have other orchids that do not have what we call a pseudobulb. Pseudobulbs come in all different shapes and sizes. Now on this one, it's a, a cattleya orchid, and the pseudobulb on this one is thinner, just like a dendrobium is thinner, and it stores nutrients, it stores energy for a longer drought period. And this is also a cattleya, and you can see here the pseudobulb is a little thicker than the last one. It's not as wrinkled. Pseudobulbs can come in circles, they can come in spheres, they can come in longer elongated canes, they can come in different shapes, and all that means is that they have an extra storage compartment to keep water, to keep nutrients, and usually they go through a dormancy cycle. So that's your main difference between monopodial and sympodial orchids. On your monopodial orchid, you will have one flower spike that spikes up and from there they spike out. Now this is called a flower spike. Um, there's nothing new to that, but it's also called a peduncle. So when you see the peduncle, it will emerge from the stem of your Phalaenopsis orchid. And on it, it will have several different nodes. Nodes are just little, um, as you can see, I don't know if that's focusing or not, but the stem, let's turn it this way, there. So this node right here is just a place where you'll need to know when it comes to cutting your orchid. So there'll be a node closer to the stem, there'll be a node about halfway, and the internode is the space in between those nodes. Then you'll have a node higher up, and then you'll have a very last node 
where it stops growing. If your orchid is healthy, it has nice green plump leaves that don't bend very easily. You can cut, you can force this orchid to rebloom. Not all orchids rebloom. So don't force an orchid that doesn't have a habit to rebloom to rebloom. You'll just be, you know, stressing your poor orchid. So if you want this orchid to rebloom, you're going to find the last flowering node and you're going to cut before that. If you want the orchid to take a time to rest, to focus on root production, you will find the node closest to the stem and cut just about one, a little less than an inch or 2.5 centimeters above that node. And it will put some cinnamon on it and that will tell the orchid to focus on root production. This is, whole thing here is called a peduncle. From the peduncle, you will see a pedicel. A pedicel is this little spike that spikes out from the peduncle. So you have the peduncle and you have the pedicel. In some orchids, they don't have this peduncle and pedicles. They have what just branches out everywhere like a tree. That's not a typical monopodial orchid development. So like on this one here, on this whole thing that the whole thing from the stem to the peduncle to the pedicles to the blossoms, all this right here is called the inflorescence. So when you're talking about the inflorescence, we have a feeling that it's just talking about one little flower. It's not, but it's talking about the entire flower stem, flower spike. It's talking about the nodes, the blossoms, everything in between it. That's the inflorescence. So on this one, after these flowers will cut off, will fall off. I don't want it to rebloom. So I'm going to cut it back all the way. I'm not going to cut it on this node. I'm not going to cut it on this node. I'm going to find the very closest node to the stem. Don't cut it right on top the node because your node is where your orchid is going to have its defense system. It will attack bacteria in this node if the bacteria goes through the stem and it hits the node. The node is the part that keeps the orchid healthy and it has the strongest defense system. So it needs a little bit of stem above it. Don't cut it right on the node. Cut it a little bit above the node and then put cinnamon on it at that node. For a sympodial orchid, remember a sympodial orchid will have that rhizome. Instead of the stem going up, it has a rhizome that goes horizontal. For blossoms and how to care for the blossoms, I'm going to get a Cattleya orchid. Now this blossom right here, it first started as a bud. A bud is a not fully formed flower and it's going to be formed first of three leaves. And these are actually called sepals. So th these three projections, they come out and they protect the actual flower from anything that can be insects to low humidity to too much light. These three projections are going to open out and they form the back three sepals. Now sepals are, you're going to have a dorsal sepal and you're going to have lateral sepals. That's the lateral sepal. They will look almost like the exact flower. If you look at this Phalaenopsis here, bring it closer in, uh, there. So you'll have the dorsal sepal, you'll have the lateral sepals. These are not actually petals. They imitate petals. They'll have almost the same color, but they're not exactly petals. Orchid has three petals. You'll have two lateral ones and one that is on the bottom that is more developed called a lip or a labellum. You can call them either one. Now this essentially, I'll put this way up here so you can see it. So this is the lip or the labellum of your orchid. 
and that is the landing platform of where your pollinator is going to land and your pollinator is going to crawl up into the center column of your orchid to be pollinated it forms a perfect symmetry that is called bilateral symmetry it's kind of like if you put a mirror up to your face what's on the left side is going to be the exact same thing on the right side that's what the orchid does. If you put a mirror in the middle of the orchid, whatever is images on the left is going to be also on the right. The labellum, when it is in the bud, it is one of the, the it is on the top. <laughs> and why orchids do this, I do not know. As it forms, it will turn, called a supination process. So when this turns, your labellum will be on the bottom. It will be the landing platform. Some orchids don't turn and it's called a resupination. So that labellum is on top. Now, if you notice, the labellum is usually the largest. So in a female catacetum orchid or catacetum orchid, the labellum is actually the, the largest projection of the blossom and it will form like a hood and cover the orchid itself. It's usually green in this instance. And on the male catacetum orchid, that resupination process actually works <laughs> and the labellum is on the bottom. So those, that's what is important about the lip or the labellum of the orchid. Inside the lip, when the pollinator walks down to the throat of the orchid, this is called the column. And this an orchid has both masculine and feminine parts in the same flower. Unless you're a catacetum orchid, that's different. So your the anther and the stigma are the male and the female parts of the orchid and they are both inside the column of the orchid or the throat of the orchid where your pollinator is going to land, going to go inside. Now that's not the only way that orchids produce new life through pollination. Sometimes orchids will produce what we call keikis or baby orchids. Keiki is a Hawaiian term for baby. Now a keiki can produce mainly on Phalaenopsis and on Dendrobiums also. You can tell it's a new growth. No, don't. My cat. You can tell it's a new growth right there from the side that has a total different leaf pattern. It's not producing leaf from the main stem. It's producing the leaves from the side of the stem. And that is a clone of the mother plant. It's a way of producing new life that doesn't involve a different parent. It's no sets of different chromosomes. It's the exact clone of the mother. So it will have the same colors. It will have the same smell. It will have the same growth patterns. When you mix two chromosomes or two, well, two pairs of different parent chromosomes together, then you'll have what's called a hybrid. Now hybrids are very like when you're ordering orchids online and you see a hybrid it's actually better as a new orchid hobbyist to invest in hybrids first because hybrids let's say the father parent or the father plant has a more tolerant for higher temperatures and the mother plant has a tolerance for lower temperatures so this hybrid is going to adapt well in both situations that you grow it in so the hybrid has more leniency to growth, you know, and especially as a new orchid grower, if you want an orchid that is sturdy, don't get a species orchid or an orchid that is has both parents the same, but get a hybrid because they will adapt better. They will do better in your climate until you learn a little bit more about orchid care. As for the orchid leaves, there are two main kinds of leaves. One is going to be called a unifoliate, like this orchid. From every pseudobulb that you see, there is one leaf. Uni means one. And other orchids will have a bifoliate, like this one. From every pseudobulb, you see two leaves. 
As for orchid care, there's not really much difference in how you will care for the unifoliates and bifoliate. The one thing you need to know about the leaf though is that when you go to clean leaves, sometimes they will have deposits like this one does. Um, these deposits just accumulate on top of the leaf. So when you go to clean the leaves or even clean them from dust or anything else, you need to know about the leaves. And this is both unifoliate and bifoliate. Don't ever get the back of the leaf and just wipe it down. I mean, the back of the leaf are, is extremely sensitive. That's where the stomata are located. Now the stomata are the breathing mechanism of the orchid. Does the orchid have stomata on top? Yes, they do. They just don't have them in larger quantities. So actually a Phalaenopsis orchid will have a waxy coating on the top of it where water will fall and it's actually hydro repellent. The water will fall on this leaf and drip down to the end of the orchid. What the orchid drinks of or absorbs the water is on the underside of the leaf. It's on the back side. And this is where the majority of the stomata are located, which in orchid care means it's more tender, which means insects and bugs and pests and every little thing that shouldn't be on this earth are right under your orchid leaf on the bottom side because that's the juicier part of the orchid leaf. Be extra careful with the underside of the leaf. One thing also about leaves, when you have a sympodial orchid like this Cattleya, there'll be this part which is called a sheath. This kept the flower intact before it was formed. It's not fully developed. It's just um, to keep it safe from extra humidity, from all these things that I mentioned before. So this is a sheath. Now this dead part right here, and this is where many people switch the terms, this dead stuff right here that you can just peel off, that's called a cataphyll. Um, it never develops into a leaf. It's just a protective old tissue that's on the orchid. Now, if you keep the cataphylls on here and you water a lot, that water can get trapped inside the cataphylls as they can the sheaths too. So be careful with that. So you'll need to be extra careful in watering with this cataphyll on your orchid. As for sympodial orchids also, you'll have a lead bulb and you'll have a back bulb. Now a lead bulb is one of the youngest bulbs where the new growth is occurring. And now on my lead bulb, I have actually a blossom and new roots coming out all over the place. The back bulbs are the ones that don't, will not flower anymore. They've given everything that they've given. They don't have any more. They will store energy. So don't cut them off, leave them on there until they're just terribly ugly and dry and useless then you can cut them off. But in all other sources, they in all other instances, they do provide extra nutrients to your orchid. So as long as they're green, as long as they're healthy and plump, keep them on. The last thing I wanted to say, and this is a perfect example of what not to do. <laughs> do not pot your rhizome. Remember, this is a sympodial orchid, so it has a rhizome. The rhizome should be on top of the potting medium. Now look at mine. I potted mine and I just got carried away and just started packing all kinds of potting medium in here. So I buried my potting medium, my rhizome. That is going to cause rot quickly. So keep your rhizome level with the potting media that you want. Here is another example of the opposite extreme. On this orchid, the rhizome is actually coming up and out of the potting media. The roots are growing down. Look at that root. Isn't that just gorgeous? I love that root. Um, don't cut aerial roots. So here's the rhizome. It's actually above the potting media. It's not 
on the potting media to be correct it should be laying right you know directly on the potting media this one is rising above so next year when i pot repot i'm going to take this and level it down to the exact level of the potting media so that's the care that you need to take when you have a rhizome aerial roots when you repot don't cut them off don't just repot them inside the pot because they will die aerial roots are accustomed to be on the outside of the pot so leave them on the outside of the pot now aerial roots come in all shapes and sizes they will they will want to attach themselves but once they start growing out here that they're just happy to get that extra water droplets that are on the air currents or from your humidifier they're happy to get that extra fertilizer if you missed they're happy to just do whatever they want and you can tell like this root is starting to poke out this one too from the pot they also when you repot them and you put them on the inside of the pot, they're going to have a hard time to adjust because they're adjusted to have that air on the very tip of their root. So just, you know, for aerial root care, don't ever cut them. Don't ever try to force them back into the pot unless they're very new. If they're new and they haven't reached the potting media yet, you can train them to grow back inside the pot. It's not the best you know aerial roots like to be in air when you have a bud like this let's say it is growing great you're counting the days it's it's just about to bloom and burst into this beautiful flower and then all of a sudden it just shrivels up and drops <laughs> that's called bud blast bud blast can happen because of several different reasons and the main reason is temperature either your orchid had a cold draft and it was too cold for it or you placed it by a hot air vent and all that hot dry air just cooked it or your orchid was in transport so that's why it's really tricky to buy orchids that are in bud when you buy them and they ship for about a week it's really tricky because they go through all these adverse conditions that they're not used to that they they were growing fine but then something drastic changed and it could be also too much fertilizer you know your your bud was growing fine you're just wanting it to blossom out and you use too much fertilizer and it and it falls so bud blast is when it just something happened that was drastic that caused your orchid to drop some orchids don't have pseudobulbs like we know them we have they have canes now this is a dendrobium orchid and instead of a pseudobulb it has what we call a cane because it's hard to tell the difference between the cane and the stem they're not that much thicker they look exactly like the stem so are they pseudobulbs yes they are but for some reason we just call them canes the care for these is just to be careful when you're watering to not let water get in between these dead caterpillars. okay um don't let water accumulate in those that is going to cause rot it's going to cause a proliferation of bacteria just keep the water on the media and you'll do absolutely fine with these canes Orchid seeds have to be extremely light to travel on a wind current and land in the nicks and the crannies of the trees about a third of the height on the top of the tree. So they can't carry extra baggage. So what they get rid of is the nutrient part of the seed. Now the nutrient part of the seed is called an endosperm. And if you cut a bean in half and that all that extra part around the bean, that's called the endosperm the actual seed is extremely tiny that's why orchid seeds are extremely tiny fan what is a fan in orchid care it's two things first it's the fan you know you should keep that fan on day and night the other is this look how this 
Catacetum orchid will fan out. It has one pseudobulb and from there the leaves just fan out into the different sides. It's just the way that this orchid is grown. It's part of the orchid. There's nothing wrong with it. It's actually kind of cute. Genre and genus. Genre is a bigger category of orchids. For example, you have Vandas, you have Phalaenopsis, you have Cattleyas, you have Dendrobiums. All of these, you have Brassavolas, which is this one right here. You have all kinds of genre of orchids. Now, genus is just the singular term for genre. So there are several genera and there are there is one genus. Kokedama. Oh, I wish I had my kokedama here. Kokedama is just a way of potting your orchid without a pot. <laughs> it's a Japanese technique where you're going to get the roots of an orchid and you're going to spread them over charcoal or over some kind of inorganic material. And then you're going to put moss on the outside of that and wrap it with a transparent line. That forms a cute little ball and it just, it's so adorable because it replaces the pot and it can sit alone on a tray because it has the moss on the outside and the charcoal on the inside, which will not let the roots rot. And it just makes a, a cute little design. There is a tutorial on here about kokodamas. Lipothetic. <laughs> Lipothetic just means an orchid that grows on rocks and cliffs and because we have an epithyte which will grow on trees. It likes bark, the roots attached to the bark. Are they much different? A little bit. Um, sometimes lipothetic orchids will, and this is sometimes, this is a big generalization here. Sometimes they'll like to have more water because they attach to rocks on the sides of the waterfall. So it's not on the waterfall, it's to the side where there's tremendous amounts of humidity. There's tremendous amounts of water supply. So these orchid roots are going to dangle down through the layer of leaf litter to get to this more humid layer of a riverbed stream type thing. So they are a little bit different, but this again, you're going to have to research your specific genre of orchid and your specific species of orchids because not all species are the same inside the genre. So don't just think, oh my orchid's lipothetic, I'm going to drench it in water. Please don't. Like a Pathiopetalum or a Phragmopedium orchid, they are terrestrial orchids. So, you know, we think, oh terrestrial, I can pot them with the potting mix I use at home. No, you can't. The Terrestrial orchids, yes, they grow, you know, in the ground, but they're growing on top a layer of moss. They're growing on top a layer of dead leaf litter. They're growing on top this layer that's very airy, that's very um, rich with decomposed material. So it has a, a very different system of potting. It's not the same as terrestrial plants. So don't use your potting medium ever on a terrestrial orchid. Mycorrhiza. Mycorrhiza is the name of a fungus. <laughs> Not all fungus are bad. Yay! <laughs> so don't go out there trying to kill all the bacteria you see with hydrogen peroxide because not all fungus and not all the bacteria are bad. Remember when I said that the, the endosperm on the seed of the orchid, well, it doesn't have it. It just has that little bitty tiny, tiny seed that floats on the air current and lands in the trees, in the, the voids of the tree bark. Well, there it's going to encounter a wonderful, nice neighbor called mycorrhiza. And mycorrhiza is a fungus that is going to provide it nutrients for the first years of its life. So, it's not a symbiotic relationship in, in the sense that the orchid seed actually doesn't give much back. It, it's more like a, it's like a loving grandmother who wants to, you know, just fill her grandkids with cookies, you know? Um, that was a horrible example. But, 
So you get the idea, this, this fungus just takes care of this orchid seed until it has enough roots and it has enough leaves so that the orchid seed can live by itself into a mature plant. Osmunda. Osmunda is a coconut fiber that is also used in potting media and it's I don't use it that much because of the high salt content. I've never actually found much um, use for coconut fiber except for in the background of a terrarium. But Osmunda fiber, you can buy it. You can use it as a potting media there. If there's nothing else, try it. Peat moss is another one that I do not recommend because peat moss is not the same as sphagnum moss. It's just not. It, it, peat moss is a whole layer of sphagnum moss, but also the twigs that fall on there, the leaves that fall on there, the dead bugs. If you chew gum and spit it out on top of the moss, that's going to go in there too. So all these layers of unidentified junk is ground up together into a very fine powder and it just clumps together and it doesn't provide airflow it doesn't provide absorption of water it doesn't provide anything that your orchid roots need but it's cheap that's why most people go for it and on the bag i think this is totally wrong on the bag they have sphagnum moss written really big because peat moss is sphagnum moss but it's a lot of other stuff too so they put really big sphagnum moss and underneath they put peat moss don't go for it go for the pure sphagnum moss that is a grade aaa or five stars or if it's from the country new zealand or anything like that that is proven in orchid care Paloric orchids. Paloric orchids, I do have one. It's not in bloom right now. It's, um, but what happens? Come back here because right now you are the biggest blossom I have, so I have to use you. On, remember when you, I said you had three sepals and two petals and a labellum? Well, that is not going to change in a poloric orchid. What's going to change is the sepal is going to think, hey, I want to be a labellum. So it goes to there. Or this dorsal petal will think, I want to be a labellum too. Or this labellum is going to think, hey, I like to be a, a lateral petal. And so the when the orchid is in formation, this information kind of gets mixed up of, what I am, what my identity is, what I'm here for. Some of them are beautiful because they can form like three distinct labellums and it has all kinds because the labellum is usually the more colorful of the blossom or it can form, you know, three petals and be kind of flat and bland. So peloric orchids they're not going to die on you. They're not weaker than the rest of the orchids. They're just, they had some kind of different configuration when they were forming. Some orchids have developed a pyloric blossoming into their cycle already. So every flower they will give will be pyloric. Other orchids will have a abnormal pyloric growth on them. That's perfectly fine. Um, celebrate the difference because you have a beautiful blossom it just you know got kind of confused on there what was supposed to be its identity and so it formed a labellum a labellum and a labellum uh, or a petal 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 and so you know that's all it is to pyloric orchids they're not any different they're not weaker they're not more susceptible to infection or bacteria they're perfectly healthy banish moss the next term. Spanish moss is not sphagnum moss and sphagnum moss is not Spanish moss. I have Spanish moss. This horrible, ugly, dry, repulsive type of moss <laughs> is only good for floral design and I love it for floral design. As you can see, it is dry as everything. It does not hold water. It will kill your orchids. 
So only use this as a top layer if you missed a lot or if you have a hanging basket and you want to miss, but still I'd go with sphagnum moss. It's very different from Spanish moss. Spanish moss is, I mean, look at that. It, it's just, I mean, this is beyond dead. Uh, um, this is like several layers beyond dead in my book. So, and that's, you know, healthy Spanish moss. Uh, I don't know, it, it's, don't use it. Stay away from it. It's like peat moss. And the last term in our orchid care, velamen. I need a aerial root here. There you go. So in this orchid, you have a root and here she is. This coating on top of the root is not the actual root. It's called a velamen. The velamen protects the root from all kinds of harm. And it also expands the surface area of the root. So the velamen inside, the root is actually a thin wire inside. It's a very thin line and the velamen covers that. So that is what a velamen is. Velamen actually has chlorophyll in it. So when you spray it with water, that's why it turns green. It will photosynthesize and actually it is a tiny, tiny cell layer uh, that just protects the root itself. Sometimes when you have brown mushy roots, instead of cutting the root, you can just pull off the dead velamen and keep the root there. I mean, it might help, it might be gone too, but that's what turns brown and mushy, the velamen on top. The velamen does have little bitty hairs on it that attach and make the, the attachment really stronger. That is everything you need to know about velamen. Don't cut them. Don't cut aerial roots ever. If you want all this information in a cute little print, printable download, go to the site Orchidaria. It's orchid and E-R-I-A, which has got terrarium and orchid, and I put them together to make Orchidaria. Type in Orchidaria orchid anatomy and you'll see my page on the bottom of the page there is a printable pdf which you can download for free um, i will actually show you the page here scroll up to the top so you know what i'm doing here so this is orchidaria and if you go to orchid anatomy and it will be here and it has everything I talked about today with some examples. On the bottom, it does have the words printed out. And on the very bottom, it has the printable PDF. So thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please subscribe. So it just gives me a little feedback of what I'm doing. If there are terms in here that, you, that I didn't define, please put them in the comments below. And happy cultivating.